uh, from I'm, our July. Make a motion we uh, approve the minutes as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right, report from our mayor. Actually, just a few things so Councilman Robinson can get to the most important thing that's going to happen tonight, right? <laughs> so I just want to remind everybody um, the police department is hosting their back to school bash this Saturday. Um, that will be at the Methodist Church. And that is the event that they host every year where um, folks can come, get ready to go back to school, receive some uniforms, backpacks, school supplies, certificates for haircuts, different things like that. So always a great time and always um, well received by the community and appreciate them continuing to do that. Also, um, Count, I mean, um, Richard Johnson mentioned in the work session, but want to remind everybody the pedestrian tunnel there for the Flying Creek Nature Preserve is under construction. So want to be mindful if you're in that area just for um, traffic delays, you're not be able to access um, Veterans Drive. And also on Scenic 98, there is some construction going on there by the county. So that area is very congested, but please have your patience if you drive through there. And also want to thank... Um, Public Works, um, Jamie Rollins and his staff, and also Justin, um, who is working at Flying Creek Nature Preserve for um, the beautification there at Knoll Park. Um, we talked about that. Justin came in and we talked about it, talked about starting to really work that management plan. They've been doing a great job with that perimeter, and um, it really looks great, and appreciate that. One more shout out to the rec department. We had a pool pump go down this week. They worked overtime getting that pump ready because we had a big swim meet this weekend. We also have another swim meet this weekend. A lot of folks there and really well attended. And I know Pat and his staff worked really hard to get that ready and get the pool ready. So thank you to them. A shout out. Just, you know, departments that never really receive the appreciation that we should show them because um, they touch so many lives here in Fairhope and just appreciate what they do. Thank I you. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. All right. When, when were we going to recognize? Oh, we're going to, I'll do it during my. Okay. Can I catch you? Very good. All right. Very good. All right. Public participation agenda items. Uh, five is a public hearing. Six through 25, I believe. Six through 25. Anybody, you have three minutes. Come up, say your name, address, any agenda items to speak on, on agenda items six through 25. All right, guys. Council comments. Apparently, I need to yield my time to Councilman Robinson, so I'll do so. I, I, I will go ahead and do the same. I appreciate that, guys. Yes, sir. Not me. I'm a guy. I got something to say. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Out of boy. So, so first, before I get to this group of gentlemen, I got here. Um, there, there's another group in Fairhope uh, that did something big uh, in the last week or so, and that is a group of 18-year-old Fairhope softball uh, ladies won the All-American Youth Sports World Series in their own right. So we oh, want to wow. celebrate those ladies uh, for a job well done. Um, and at some point, we'd like to get their names to be able to recognize them formally for their success. Um, but I've now brought up, brought tonight uh, my 11-year-old uh, all-star team guys if you'll if you'll come up to the front like you did last time one at a time just walk just come on up stand gather in front here um, the last time I brought these kids to you they had just won the district championship uh, and they went on to the Alabama state championship and represented the city as team Fairhope and they won the state championship uh, and then they went on to the regional championship and represented our area as team Alabama and this past weekend, they successfully won the regional championship as Team Alabama. And now they go on to the 11-year-old Cal Ripken World Series right. as Team Southwest. So, right. so this, this group has done incredible things. Uh, they're an incredible group of young men that I'm very fortunate to, to get to coach. Uh, they've got two other great coaches out there, Colin Roof and Nick Hausman. Uh, and just a great group of parents with them that, that have been really supportive of us as we've done all this traveling and all this baseball during the summer. Uh, but job's not done yet. That's right. So if you're watching tonight or here in person, this group is, is on the fundraising train right now. They've got raffles galore, and we are looking for any kind of sponsorship available because the Cal Ripken World Series is a 10-day 
10 night required stay in a hotel of Cal Ripken's choice in Florence. And so that is not an easy thing for most families to do, uh, but we are going above and beyond because these boys have earned every single bit of it. And we wanna let them play out for all the things that they've earned. Um, so boys, congratulations to you. Be proud of yourself. You have done a fantastic job representing the city of Fairhope, and we look forward to all the wonderful things you're going to continue to do. So right. congratulations. All right. Good job, boys. Don't move. Mayor Sullivan, you'll come with boys again. Y'all going to see a lot more curveballs up there now. All right. <laughs> We get in here? Okay. Just want to stand out with Okay. We're good. Smile. Yeah, smile. Be in the picture. Unless you got your game face on. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, and, and before, hey, I, before I forget, one of the things, in addition to the raffles that you can find us sharing on Facebook, there is a mixed pickleball tournament this Saturday at Quail Creek. Uh, mixed team tournament that uh, all the proceeds will go to benefit this team. So mixed co-ed, co-ed, co-ed bracket. Yep. Thank you, boys. You are dismissed. All right. Good job, guys. Hey, Councilman Robinson, what 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 site or what Facebook page can they go to to find? Uh, us? They're on multiple. Uh, yeah, so you can you can find uh, find them on my personal page, and then we are sharing them on multiple. Uh, what's happening in Fairhope? We're trying to get the word out. Uh, hoping some of our local news outlets will come check us out, give us the opportunity to, to get a little press as a local team going to the World Series. And Councilman Robinson will be happy to share his videos of walk-off hits. 100%. <laughs> Dif kind of different hero every game. Yeah. That's called a team right there, boss. You know, one of these kids may grow up to uh, play for Fairhope High School, and I will uh, say that the starting pitcher of the Alabama High School All-Star game uh, was Fairhope High School player. He pitched uh, Cook. two innings of a uh, shutout baseball in the South's victory over the North uh, this last week. That's great. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank Very you, guys. Good. That's all I've got. All right. Very good. Uh, Councilman Boone, did you have anything? No. Brother? Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to leave you out. No, 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 no. Okay. Job well done. All right. Um, Hunter, uh, is this, uh, who is this on the public against yeah, Hunter, right? Yeah, we'll open the, you want to come in, yeah. That's yours. Oh, this is all yours. Mm -hmm. It's hard Someone to want to, um. Signing amendment. <laughs> that kind of gets dry now. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, that's not work. <laughs> so this is a, an amendment to the zoning ordinance uh, proposed by staff coming to you with a recommendation for the city council. It is a text amendment to the medical overlay district. Um, no, no real surprise, this is stemmed from a, an addition at Thomas Hospital that had its own site plan review. Um, can, can I interrupt you and just go ahead and introduce the ordinance, yeah, you, Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Go I ahead. appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Let me introduce Thank you. All right. Thank um, you, Councilman Burrell. Yes, sir. So the medical overlay district, on the screen, I've got kind of the first paragraph of that that defines the intent and location of that. And Thomas Hospital, even when the medical overlay district was formed, was defined in that. It encompassed the area surrounding Thomas Hospital. Uh, there were some uh, development uh, standards established, dimensional, which setbacks and, and area, and so that's height and setbacks mostly affecting this, pro this project, um, was based on B4 standards, regardless of the underlying zoning. So the red text, I'm gonna skip through this one. The red text is what staff proposed at the Planning Commission meeting. And the Planning Commission revised one sentence, um, stricken on this page in red, and revised to read in blue. And essentially what this is doing is allowing the, any additions to the tower, uh, doesn't meet any regulations we have today, but again, those buildings were built many years ago before our ordinance was read, reads the way it does today. So it allows any expansions to those to, meet the existing height and setbacks of the those older buildings but not parlay that into the other properties within the medical overlay mm -hmm. district 
So this is a follow-up to the site plan review, and this is it on the screen. Um, the vote did come unanimously for recommendation with that amendment from the Planning Commission, and staff still supports this one. So I can flip back if you're still reading or have any questions on the language. No, thank you. I want to open the public hearing. We'll open the public hearing. Anybody here to speak on this particular agenda item? This particular ordinance, please come up to the podium. You have three minutes. State your name and your address. Anybody? Okay. We will close the public hearing and um, we'll let this one lay. Thank you, Hunter. Yes, sir. Counselor, y'all have any questions or anything about this? Okay. All right. Thank you, Hunter. All right, agenda item number six is the final adoption is in the ordinance to amend ordinance number 1599, code of ordinances to alter the schedule of fees for construction and building permits. No. I'm gonna move for final adoption. So when you, uh, Councilman Morrell, we wanna move for final adoption and we need to state the effective date of September the 1st, if you could do that for me. Yeah, I'll move for final adoption with the effective date of September 1, 2024. Thank I'll you, second, sir. Second, second that. Yeah. yeah, I have a motion and a second. <coughs> All right. Place Any further one. discussion? Okay, go ahead. Aye. Council President? Aye. Place three? Aye. Place four? Aye. Place five? Aye. All right, motion carries. Thank you. All right. Agenda item number seven is a resolution that the public improvements removed. indicate. Huh? I think this is the one you were. Oh, I, I removed that one. Okay, we removed that one. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, number eight. Agenda item number eight is a resolution that the public improvements indicated herein for Battles Trace Subdivision Phase Eight are hereby accepted for public maintenance, subjected to the bond posted, and the authority Mayor Sherry Sullivan to extend the maintenance and guarantee agreement between the City of Fairhope and the Teachers Retirement System of Alabama. Uh, this is just a basic maintenance agreement. I believe they have two years, and after two years, we'll take over. All right. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right, hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number nine is a resolution that the Mayor Sherry Sullivan is hereby authorized to execute a contract amendment for bid number 23030, consulting services for FEMA public assistance, management services, government services with Royal Engineering and Consultant LLC to comply with FEMA contract regulations, including and not to exceed annual contract amount of $500,000. All right, the accountant spoke about this. This is Make money. a motion we approve the resolution for the contract amendment. Second. FEMA. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? You know, we discussed this in the work session. This is um, something that we're trying to get in order when if Hopefully we never have this situation in, in God's name, but we'll be prepared if we do. All right, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 10 is a resolution that the Mayor Sherry Sullivan is hereby authorized to execute a contract amendment for bid number 23031, consulting services for female public assistance management services, utilities damage projects with Royal Engineers and consulting uh, consultants LLC to comply with the FEMA contract regulations, including a not to exceed annual contract amount of five hundred thousand dollars. So moved. Second. second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 11 is a resolution that the city council approves the selection by the evaluation team for professional architectural services for RFQ for the city of Fairhope first responder hurricane safe room project to Adam Stewart architects and hereby authorize Mayor Sherry Sullivan to negotiate the not to exceed fee to be approved by council. 
motion to approve the selection and authorize the mayor to negotiate the not to exceed fee. Second. second. I have a motion and I have a second. Any further discussion, guys? We spoke about this one in the work session as well. Um, all right. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 12 is a resolution to award bid number 2023-WWF-034 for the Working Waterfront and Green Space Project to Rollin Construction, Inc. with a bid proposal not to exceed $9,988,379.46. The contract has been approved by the U.S. Department of Treasury, ADCNR, and the City Attorney pursuant to the resolution number 504524. Make a motion we approve the resolution toward the working waterfront second. project. You have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I, I can't let this one go by yeah. without commenting <laughs> on this. I mean, ten million dollars in a, a long, long, long road to get here. Many years, and uh, you know, I'd have to thank many, many people. Probably uh, not the least of which would be Richard Johnson and uh, Kim, and uh, you know our. Um, our grant uh, coordinators and writers and the mayor and mm -hmm. uh, Clark, a lot of people to be thanked on this. It's been a, been a long, long time coming. Uh, I do have one quick question, though, uh, on this just came to mind is that, you know, the restaurant will be opening down there ho hopefully any day. Are they going to still uh, be, be a, are they going to have parking down there while yeah. this is going on? Um, okay, I'm sure that question will come up. Our, our plan is we have to hold a pre-construction meeting, obviously, but the plan is to phase right. the components of this and to leave traffic flowing as much as we possibly can. So we'll work with the Blind Tiger and those folks and make sure they can still, you know, get some traffic down there. Yeah. I was going to crack a joke in the work session with all this going on that we at least leave one lane open to get in and out of the city as we're so much going on. I mean, it's, 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 I can't even leave my house right well, now. Yeah, it's because Daphne's doing stuff. We're doing stuff. County's, I mean, doing, stuff. county's doing, doing stuff. stuff. Yeah, and so just you don't know, go to Montrose. Talk, <laughs> come together. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> right. All right, guys. Um, we have a motion, Miss Lisa. Motion and a second. Correct. Yes, we do. Did I vote? No. No. Vote. Thank you. All right. Jack does it to me every time. Yeah. <laughs> I think he does it just to see. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, I have a motion and a second. There's no more further conversation. So all in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries. All right, thank you, Councilman Burrell. All right, moving forward, brothers and sisters. All right, agenda item number 13 is a resolution that the Mayor Sherry Sullivan is hereby authorized to execute a contract amendment with Thomas Thompson Engineering, Inc., for RFQ request for qualification professional landscaping architectural services planning design and construction related services for the Flying Creek Nature Preserve project formerly known as the Triangle property to add construction material testing and inspection for an additional not to exceed cost of $14,820.23 uh, our, our city engineer spoke about this one um, it's just something that is um, a standard, I believe, that we need to do. So moved. All right. I'm a second, but I am going to have a question for, for Mr. Johnson. All right. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yeah, Councilman uh, Burrell. Mr. Johnson, so is this something that's poured in place? Uh, and, and, and so why does the uh, construction company, why, why can't we require them to provide tests or core samples? or well, I, I understand the need for it. I don't disagree, but would would they not bear the burden of the cost of proving that their materials are sufficient to i'm, a, I'm picturing concrete poured in place kind yeah, of what i'm picturing that that is the majority of the testing so the pedestrian bridge will be a cast in place meaning they will okay. form it up and pour structural concrete right. that's reinforced with uh, with rebar uh, and generally, no, you, you, you have a, you want somebody you want outside the then. contractor yeah. who's independent to do right. the actual testing. So, right. <laughs> uh, because the specification says, for example, if 4,000 PSI concrete, if it doesn't break at the required amount, but let's say it, it, it breaks at 3750, 
The contract says that if it structurally is, will do, but we will pay you a reduced price for that because you did not meet the specification. So it's, it, in this case, this is a Check structural now. element. It, we need to do it. And this will also cover the greater park project, such as the foundation for the bathrooms, uh, the, the pavilions, and things like that, other material testing. Yes, so, yeah, so it's for the entire project. Thank you construction materials got you very good all right council any other, anybody else all right all right all in favor say aye. aye aye any opposed say nay all right motion carries agenda item number 14 is a resolution that the mayor sherry sullivan is hereby authorized to execute a contract with christian pruis landscaping architecture for the professional landscaping architecture services for an RFQ for the preliminary vision and budget for Bancroft Corner with a not to exceed amount of $12,500 and authorize the transfer of fiscal year 24 budget of $12,500 in two professional services account. <laughs> I'm not reading all this now. So moved. <laughs> so, second. Yeah. All right, I have a motion and a second. Uh, this is, I think, uh, Richard talked to uh, Mr. Johnson spoke to us about this one. Uh, just passed through. They transferring the monies because it was placed in the budget in a, another category. So that's why you see the transfers. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 15 is a resolution that the mayor, Sheriff Sullivan, is hereby authorized to execute change order number one for bid number 24024, North Ingleside Drainage Repair Improvement Project with a cost of $8,825 and to award change order number one to Blade Construction LLC. The new contract total will be Three hundred and thirty-one thousand dollars and eight hundred and forty-seven dollars and zero cents. All right, this is a change order for uh, Ingleside, guys. We spoke about this in the work session. All right. Make a motion All right. to approve. Second. second. Mm -hmm. I have a motion <coughs> and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> All right. Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 16 is a resolution that the City Council approves the selection by Mayor Sherry Sullivan for an on-call professional engineering services for an RFQ for the Water <coughs> Wastewater Department annual contract to Dewberry Engineering, Inc. and allow Mayor Sherry Sullivan to negotiate the not-to-exceed fee to be approved by Council. All right, guys. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 17 is a resolution that the City of Fairhope approves the procurement of a Gorman Rupp TAA-71SB self-priming pump for the wastewater treatment plant for Jim House and associates as a sole source distributor. The cost is $29,765 plus freight. This is maintenance and repairs with the water department. Darrell discussed this in the work session. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All these were budgeted, by the way. Great job, Darrell. All right, hearing none, any further discussion, guys? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 18 is a resolution that the City of Fairhope approves the procurement of scraper blades, parts, and installation mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. for the Shreeb, Schreiber, or Schreiber South Clarifier at the wastewater treatment plant from Parkson as sole source and manufacturer. The cost will not to exceed $35,123 in zero cents. Move to approve the procurement. All right. I have a motion. You can a second, guys. Someone second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, this one was actually under budget, and uh, it was in the budget. So. All right. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. <clears throat> motion carries. All right, agenda item number 19 is a resolution that the city of Fairhope approves the procurement of Flick model SR4660 
Anoxit, bless you. Zone Submersion Mixer and Flick Model <laughs> SR464 Anaerobic Zone Mixer for the wastewater treatment plant from Jim House and Associates as a sole source. The cost is $56,889.00 plus freight. It's another wastewater and water treatment plant maintenance and repair. Make a motion. Don't fight Love each other. <laughs> second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 20 is a resolution that the City of Fairhope approves the procurement of six pad mounted transformers from Gresco for restore funded sewer upgrades for a not to exceed cost of $100,500.00. The transformers are exempt from formal bidding per code of Alabama 1975, section 4116.51b7. The cost will be included in the 2025 budget. Make a motion we approve the resolution. All right. So move, second. I have a motion and a second. Mr. Patterson, our supervisor of electric, came up and spoke to us about this one. Um, we did not budget, but we have it budgeted for the 2025 season, and our accountant said the money is there. So, all right, guys. Any further discussion? Yeah. Uh, Council President, I did I talk to Mr. Patterson today about this, and I did ask him to, to, to keep looking forward mm -hmm. such as this and look well out into the future because I think some of these are 35 weeks lead time. And I hear something about 90-something weeks, almost two something years something. lead time on others. So we need to be looking three, four years out in advance. Mm -hmm. One storm could really put the hurt on us if we were to – to run short on transform and this is a this is a national this is actually a worldwide crisis there's just so few builders of these so i uh, appreciate the, you calling ben and talking about that and just your team and mayor if y'all look as far out as you, as you can i mean we may be you know ordering transformers that we won't get until 2027. yeah you know i agree that was it okay council anybody else all right very good thank you councilman burrell all right. No further discussion here. None. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 21 is a resolution to award bid number 24050 to Serve you Field Services, Inc. for natural gas distribution system leak detection survey for a not to exceed amount or annual contract amount of $85,000.00. Uh, Wes, this is um, standard testing to make sure that we're in in um, in the rules and regulations. So this is just normal procedure. Make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion, guys? All right. Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 22 is a resolution that the City of Fairhope approves the procurement of installation of the National Fitness Campaign Fitness Court System by Nationwide Fixture Installation as a sole source installer. The installation cost is not to exceed $25,000.00. Move to approve the procurement of the installation at the Mike Ford Tennis Center. <laughs> Second. <laughs> yeah. All right. We have a, a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I think we did the right thing. All right. Amen. Yes, sir. All right. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. <laughs> Agenda item number 23 is a resolution that the we city. remove that, right? Oh, yes, we're tabling that one. Thank you, right. Councilman Burrell. That was a question, tabling it. I think you need to yeah, well, I think we need to remove it. Uh, oh, we can't just we table. Can table both of them, but we didn't do anything actually in the meeting here on number seven. We kind of uh, we talked about that before. I think you just need to. Well, he well, removed it. Well, right? we, so we removed yeah, we amended it. seven. He removed it before the, the meeting. Started. Before the meeting, so we did do that correctly. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. Did, did we so talk about twenty three also. We talked we about it, and and we were going to decide to table it at this table. point. I'll make a motion, motion to, to table, table item uh, yeah. twenty three to Second. the next uh, to the next meeting. To the next meeting. Yes, Second. Sir. Is that okay, uh, Councilor? To the next regularly scheduled city council meeting. Or let me just say, to the next city council meeting. Okay. 
Okay. No worries. Yes, sir. All right. I have a I have a motion. Second. To, okay. I have a second. Any further discussion? So the reason I'll go back so for those that are just tuning in, the reason that we're tabling is we had a, a fairly decent discussion over this particular agenda item, and we were trying to get it done uh, for business sake. Um, but um, we, we just had to kind of tighten it up a little bit, um, decided as a council to tighten it up. So to give our uh, legal team a little bit more time to do those things, we decided to table it today. So that's what that was all about, guys, if you're just tuning in. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on that? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right. Motion carries. Agenda item number 24 is a resolution that the City Council of Fairhope approves the procurement of LED Christmas lights that are on the Omni Partners Cooperative contract with Imperial Dade in network with network distribution and therefore does not have to be let out to bid. The total purchase amount is $114,000 and zero cents. So moved. Second. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right, I got to have the lights. Very good. All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries. All right, agenda item number 25 is a resolution that the City of Fairhope approves the three-year lease of the IX7 series mail machine on the Alabama statewide contract with... Quotient Inc. I guess that therefore does not have to be let out for bid and to authorize Mayor Sherry Sullivan to sign the lease agreement. The total amount is $22,088.88 for three years. Okay. All right. I think, um, I don't know if we talked about that. I think Jeff came up and spoke yep. about this one yep. in briefing. Yes, he did. I think it's budgeted. Uh, it's maybe budgeted. Slightly over budget. Yeah, it's budgeted. No, it, mail machines to start leasing them. Right? Yeah, it's budgeted. We we, we have seven thousand for this year. That's a, the twenty two is a collective of series of three years. Got to get some. Yeah. So this year is budgeted. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Um, do we have a motion and a second, guys? We need a motion and a second, please. I make second. a motion to approve. Second. All right. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <laughs> Any further discussion? Councilman Perel. All right. Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. Aye. All in. Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries. All right. Agenda item number 26 is public participation. You have three minutes. Please come up, state your name, your address. It's for the good of the order. Good afternoon, Council. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Chris Blackwood. I live on Gafer Avenue, and I'm here in support of Jennifer Blackwood's claim against the city that was mentioned last session. I am her ex-husband and the father of our beautiful twin girls. I have been a witness to the change of a confident, strong, and independent woman, that to a fear and regret. I was a witness to the physical and emotional injuries sustained to her by Mr. McSherry, I, along with one of my daughters, took her to a medical facility to seek medical attention from those. It took a lot of time for her to get the courage to open up to our daughters and family about what had happened to her, what she was going through, and to move forward with filing charges. Sorry. I was a witness to the investigation into the allegations against Mr. McSherry. Well, the lack of any investigation. One of McSherry's investigators found me and questioned me a week before the hearing, but nothing from the prosecution. I was present in the courtroom and was under the impression that case was going to be continued and moved to another venue, as Jennifer was told, but that did not happen. What I witnessed that night was a character bashing of Jennifer and not one ounce of prosecution. In the end, the judge said that obviously something had happened between both of them and he would throw McSherry in jail if there had been an ounce of prosecution. But he had no choice but to find him not guilty, and that is a fact. I love this city. I feel a lot of pride in telling people where I live, 
but as a citizen, it is very eye-opening as to the lack of pro protection, investigation, and empathy for a victim of domestic violence, especially after she reported to everyone she was being surveyed, harassed, and intimidated. As a father of two young women, I am shocked and worried that the city would not do everything in their power to protect a woman's rights. How do you explain to young women that they may not be fully protected for speaking out? Mr. McSherry is not a victim. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. You can hear me, right? It is? Yes. Go ahead, young lady. Okay. You're okay. Um, good? I'm Grace, Jennifer Blackwood's daughter. I attend Farrow High School. I'm speaking on the behalf of myself and my sister. In 2017, when we were nine, my mother and Rona started a date. At that time, I was completely clueless about what would happen later in the relationship. As the relationship started to grow, Rona began to buy us gifts, money, and even take us on trips when we thought he was in love with our mom. I found out in 2022 that in 2018 he hit my mother for the first time. I thought highly of Ronan and when I was oblivious to the horrors he was putting my mother through behind closed doors. She would blame all of these nasty bruises on our dogs, falling, and even attacks on her in parking lots. I began to ask questions because a dog cannot do that or even falling cannot make such nasty bruises. In 2022, my mother finally told us about the abuse. Me and my sister were both somewhat shocked, but not surprised she was doing this. My mother took Rona to court and lost. There's no reason for her, to lo for her to lose. The only reason that happened was because Rona blackmailed and paid people in the case or helping with the case to keep quiet. That was very lame. He only did that because he knew he would be in jail and lose his business. It's very sad to see my mom over the time with Rona go from being a strong person to being destroyed. How low do you have to be to side with an abuser? People began to ask me why my mother never told anyone about what happened to her in 2018 until a good while later. This is because it is abuse. It's called abuse for a reason and not anything else. Everyone wants to know why most women never tell anyone soon. That's just because when a man decides to hit a woman, that woman is scared for her life. Abuse is not a game and shouldn't be treated like one. Rodin started in 2022 to take our dogs from our home and bring them to his house so my mother would have to go over to get them. He would tell her where to park, right in front of his ring doorbell camera. I remember us being followed and my mom trying to distract us from what was really happening. Ronan was writing his story, my mom being crazy and obsessive. My mother was scared and it became obvious that she trusted no one to protect her. Mm. And not letting my mother show most of her proof in court seems pretty weird. And, you know, most of the time people just don't care about stuff like this. I mean, why get into your job, work so hard to get into your job, and not do it? And shame. It's, it's a shame that people actually do this. It's a shame that people decide to uh, side with an abuser. Most people who sided with him had no other choice. Blackmail with footage of them in Ronan's bar doing things that they might, may not want to be in public. That just shows how low Ronan and his siders really can get. You are not crazy or abusive like Ronan. Hopefully you're fully capable of having emotion and protecting future victims from horrible people like him. Thank Good you. evening, gentlemen. Thank you for resetting the clock. My name is Sheree Montello. I am here joining you all tonight from Atlanta, Georgia. I am a childhood friend of Jennifer Blackwood, so I too am here um, and supportive of her. Jennifer and I have been friends going on 36 years, quite a long time. She and I have been through pretty much every phase of our life together. We, have, we both overcame many obstacles in our childhood to become successful women. She in the field of pharmaceuticals, working for Pfizer, and I in the field of education for the University System of Georgia, specifically Kennesaw State, if any of you all are familiar with the metro Atlanta area. <clears throat> Beginning early 2018, I noticed that our regular communication began to become less frequent. My childhood friend was becoming somewhat of a stranger. Not taking my calls, limiting the amount of contact that we had, 
Given that I live 300 miles away with my husband and my three children, obviously I had very limited physical contact with her, in-person contact. Little did I know the horror my dear friend was enduring. Unbeknownst to me, she was being domestically abused in this town. And sadly, I was not able to see this ongoing abuse, the wounds that were sustained from a gentleman putting his hands on her. <clears throat> Mr. Ronan McSherry, an individual that I previously thought actually cared for my dear friend, that claimed that he loved her when the relationship began. In 2022, Jennifer confided in me about all of the abuse. As you can imagine, I was horrified. Not only as a woman, but as a woman who fought so hard just as she did to become successful in our lives. Jennifer confided in me that she was struggling because she wasn't sure how to handle this, as any woman would. Jennifer is an amazingly independent, monetarily self-sufficient, hardworking woman that was being abused by the individual in this town, which I later learned was not even a citizen of the United States, much less a citizen in this town of Fairhope. As I researched a little bit about Mr. Ronan McSherry, I was appalled at the information I discovered. Even the city of Fairhope City Records had quite a lengthy report that I read on Mr. Ronan McSherry, not to mention an online video of him literally knocking another woman off of a bar stool. Gentlemen, it's quite an individual you got living in this town. Not only is he residing in this town, he's conducting business in the small town of Fairhope, Alabama. Although I no longer live in lower Alabama, I'm deeply saddened to know that such an individual is walking the streets, residing in this town, and being allowed to conduct business. I cannot for the life of me understand how this is taking place. Good evening. Hello, gentlemen, Mayor, Prosecutor. I'm Carrie DeVolder Edwards. I live on Gunnison Road in Fairhope, Alabama. And I am a domestic violence counselor with extensive training and experience. I've known Jennifer for at least 10 years. And I noticed her becoming, as her friend had said, less and less available for phone calls and for visits, refusing to go out to go grocery shopping after a point, wearing turtlenecks in the summertime, which she doesn't even do in the winter, only to see she was covering up bruises from strangulation marks by Mr. McSherry. That's when she finally told me the truth. And between her family and friends, she did decide to go for an intensive 30-day program for the domestic violence, the intimate partner violence specifically, and her PTSD, the flashbacks, the fear, the inability to leave the house, inability to sleep, nightmares, inability to carry on any kind of conversation about anything except for her abuse. Trying to figure out how she was going to shield her daughters from this, I'm glad that she went to that program and it helped her tremendously. I'm very ashamed that Ms. Blackwood had to endure being re-victimized by not being allowed to speak her piece, by being told that the venue was going to be changed. That's why I didn't come that day to be a witness, only to find out that she was told at the last minute, geez, I guess you're not prepared. And her ex-husband, Chris, was not allowed to even testify then. I have spent most of my life dedicated to helping children and families. I have treated and helped and supported male victims of domestic violence. But that is generally way less than 5% of all the victims. Even if someone comes forward and has the courage, there are three women or more a day, just in this country alone, that are killed by a partner or ex-partner of domestic violence. 
They are not listened to, they are not believed. I don't want to cry, woe is we as women type thing. The whole we women thing, that's not where I'm coming from. What are our young men witnessing that are allowed, that are seeing what the older men are doing? What's happening to their mothers, their sisters? Even their girlfriends maybe by somebody else? Their daughters? What are these young men thinking? They're above the law, especially if you own a business, especially if you're told exactly, I have people in high places higher than you will ever know. You will never be able to pull this off. You will be sorry if you do. I've been with her when she was followed, when we were being recorded. People sitting in vehicles in front of her home, her, her phone being tapped. And this is all okay, according to the city. I feel much more hope for this city than that. In 1994, a federal law was passed to protect women from this type of thing. And it's been also reiterated since then, and I hope our city can do better. Thank you. Grants are available. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody? Councilman, Mayor. My name is Cornelius Woods, and um, I live here in Fairhope at, at 210 Silo Loop. And I'm here to uh, see what we can do for the city can do to uh, help with the situation with the birds. We have an uh, ordinance about feeding geese, geese and everything like that, waterfowl in the city. But the city is getting bigger, it's growing. And we have a lot of development coming in and building homes, homes and everything. These lots are very small. And what you have, you have some neighbors coming in from different parts of the world that come in with different, you know, hobbies and things like that. But one thing is, you know, we've been living here for almost eight years, and we get neighbors coming in. Some of them start slamming in a bunch of bird feeders. We've been enjoying our backyard, my kids. We had just finished painting our uh, kids' play set. I got three girls, and I'm, I'm painting it, they're happy, we're ready for the enjoy the spring, we're ready to come up. The guy moving in, put in bird feeders, create a whole bird sanctuary. Birds, poop, everywhere on my, my kids' stuff. Go talk to the neighbor, I'm not gonna stop doing what I'm doing. I don't care, really. It led me to go, do things to try to keep the birds off my uh, kids' property. And then he cried, Oh, he's harassing me with, with the birds of prey sound. See what I did, my kid got a play set and I put the, uh, a device that make the birds of prey sound because the little wild birds that he feed me don't like birds of prey. They don't like the hawks, they don't like the owls. So I did a lot of video study and I see these birds coming in and I save my videos and I save my pictures of all the bird poop. It was literally hundreds of birds coming in there a day. They wasn't coming in before, trust me. Cause my kids said, Daddy, why we gotta keep cleaning our uh, kids' place set up? I mean, why we gotta keep, keep cleaning up the place set up? Bird poop on it all the time. I said, I just cleaned it not too long ago. Why I gotta, you know? So I'm like, okay, well, I get out there to clean it. But the thing is like, if there's something that we can do privately for the private residents, not just the public, but you know, we got ordinance for dogs pooping in you know, your yard and trespassing and stuff like that. So what can we do to help that out? Because we also have an HOA and HOA be dysfunctional. They don't even do their job some of the, some of the time. They don't even do what they're supposed to be doing. And they, they retroactive like they, they don't respond and they feel like you're starting something of 
something like that, then they go against you. And they finding you for something that somebody else is doing. And they breaking the law and the rules, but they can, but you can't. I mean, something that we can do, if please, because, you know, this makes no sense that somebody can slap in 20 bird feeders in their backyard and have a whole flock of rats, because rats like bird feeders. Squirrels like bird feeders. That's probably some of your problem that's going on around the city with these rats. They put these bird feeders out there, and they coming. Yes. So, so help someone, please. So, Mr. Woods, so the problem, you're having a problem with birds. We don't have an ordinance for birds. Not for the uh, private resident. They, I mean, y'all have for the public, for the, you know, for the geese and stuff. Yes. What do you say, Mayor? But that's it, though. We don't have anything, and I know other cities do have ordinances for residential areas that protect them from nuances or nuisances like bird sanctuaries and things like that. Well, I'm, so. What I'm saying, I'm not saying that people could not do feed birds. That ain't what I'm saying, okay? What I'm saying is when it's starting to affect someone that's enjoying their life right. in their backyard and they didn't want the bird poop all the way stuff, bird care with diseases as well. And that's to affect your health and your safety and things like that. That's what I'm asking because a lot of people are moving in and these yards are not part of from, from me to you. And you got five, six bird feeders and bird houses and everything right there. Guess what they're coming? They're flying all over my stuff, everybody else's stuff. I just, you know, that, that's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to say, oh, don't feed no bird. No, no. But some neighbors are un unreasonable, and they take enforcement like some ordinance to say, hey, hey, guy, come on, man. You got to move your bird. Move it to the front or something. You know, me coming to them, oh, forget you. F off. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, something that we can do so I won't have to be going to jail or something like that because when you got my kids <laughs> swinging their bird poop as a father, Especially if I serve in the United States military in combat. I, I, I don't really play with, with you trying to do my family like that. I'm, I'm professional. I'm not threatening. But what I'm saying, it creates a problem that put me in a hard, rock in a hard place. And I'm at peace. And people tend to go overbound. And I just want something that is something, something can be done. I love Fairhope. I've been in Fairhope. I done volunteered on, cheered on the, uh, the education system for three years. I did some things here in the city. I'm not just sitting here just complaining. I'm just, I've been part of the community. Yes, sir. Thank That's you, Mr. Woods. Yes, That's sir. Right. Councilman Martin, um, I think you and I both have spoken with Mr. Woods. I have. And um, I suggested that he talk to his neighbor, which obviously he has, so, or maybe the HOA. Yeah. Um, and I did do a little bit of research, probably not as extensive as I could have, on um, other ordinances and other locations. Did not find anything that would, you know, serve this purpose about limiting the amount of bird feeders pe folks can have, that kind of stuff. If they're in public places, then it was different. But because it's on their own property, that's why I said it was probably a neighbor-to-neighbor um, you know, situation, but I mean, we can continue to look and see if we see anything, but I'm not sure that we will find anything that would help your situation in particular. Well, I don't know that we can fix it by passing yeah. the law. It, no. it, yeah. it sounds like a civil matter. It is. It is a, a that's civil. what I said. It's neighbor to neighbor. So if we had a, a so if we had yeah. an ordinance. See the attorney shaking their head, yes, yeah. am I right? Yeah. So we had an ordinance that and I, and I told him to come because I want to talk about this. So if we had an ordinance that protected citizens for certain situations like that, and I have seen ordinances in other cities that have the, the, this same situation, believe it or not, which I, I couldn't imagine, but there are ordinances out there. So you're saying if we create an ordinance that didn't stop people from being uh, feeding birds but, but made stipulations that they could not affect other people if they had bird feeding, you're saying that's still a civil? You can't, that wouldn't. But, but how, do you, how do you determine what the source of the birds are? I put a bird feeder in my yard and there's 100 birds that fly over. How do you, origin, how do you determine that I originated the source of those birds? I mean, it's a wild bird. It's not a pet. It's not a domesticated animal. So it's hard to, to put a fine point on where those birds are coming from and why they're coming to a certain location. Well, we got ten feeders in the yard. Well, I mean, I mean that's logic. It's common law. Well, I mean, you know, common thought process. Yeah, well, got, yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to have a trial here, right? <laughs> like we did earlier, but uh, the, um, you know, 
and, and that wasn't you, Mr. Woods. Right, well, I understand. Uh, but, you know, if, if you create a situation, just, you know, you may have an argument that they've created a situation which is unsanitary yeah. and a nuisance. I'm just nuisance. saying that, that just my personal opinion on that matter is that let's say you were feeding every stray cat. They don't belong to anybody, but if you had thousand cats coming to your house and they were pooping all over the sidewalk and all over your yard and everywhere. It might be a situation where you could say, all right, you got to put a stop to this because you're creating a hazard for, for yeah. a health hazard even for, right. for, for me. No, that's exactly right. So just, that's my kind of advice to you even maybe is that I still think it's a civil matter. I don't think the, the city can initiate that, but I think if you wanted to, you could do that. Am I right? I'm looking at the attorneys. Is that correct? Would that be the proper course of action? So let me go further with this. So, you know, you know, this guy served in the military and, you know, he put, you got a guy with feeders all in, in the yard and all these birds, and I understand the lawyer speaking, but just a layman and a common man talking here, and common sense, if a guy has a feeders all in his yard, and so, Birds are coming in, birds are pooping. Okay, it may not be that, but so now I put up something to retract or disturb the birds. That's, 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 should be okay, okay? But in this man's situation, and as we know, the HOAs have no regulations. He served for our country. They're literally kicking him out of his house because he put that particular bird up there to distract the, or push the other birds away. But the noise could be, you know, you, you gotta be careful because you don't want to become a nuisance. You don't right. want to, you know, That's first you don't want to violate the noise ordinance. And then you don't want yourself to become a nuisance because then he could say, well, that noise is a nuisance to me. I'm just saying it, it's a, you try one it's of those, a civil matter. You know how you put an owl, you see people put That's an what owl he did. On, the, on the post. That's what I got. Here. I, I got owls that it moves his head automatically and stuff, and and, and it slowed down a lot of birds. Uh, trust me, hundreds of birds. It it, it it slowed down a bunch of it. He got a bunch of birds. Not a lot of uh, bird feed is kind of molding, but I keep eighty five percent of the birds awake. But I had to play the sounds. Now my sounds is in the ordinance because I have a decibel meter on, on my phone, so it's seventy five decibel meter. So I made sure of that. But you know what I'm saying. Uh, they starting to get people to, oh, go down there to hear the sounds. But see, what happened, if you selective enforcing the rules of the HOA saying, okay, well, he can have that. He can do that to you. But then when I do something to keep him back, oh, no, you're not making the sounds. We don't like what you're doing. We're going to find you, and we're going to not find him. Now, my stuff is in the court already, to be honest about it. But they, you know, trying to take my home and put us out on the streets for that. You know what I mean? My you know, my kids, because the guy in the back, being an a-hole, wanted to feed the birds, and and they sit in the house. We got to play on the outside. My kid got to play on the outside. And we, I know exactly where the birds are coming from. I understand what you're saying, uh, Councilman Robinson, but I know exactly where the birds come from. I have a video of that. So if uh, someone can show proof of what the birds are coming in at and what they are doing, that should be enough proof to say, hey, yeah, you are causing a nuisance on someone's property. It, it is proof, yeah. but it's proof that you need for the civil matter. It's not no, something We can't we create can... an ordinance is what they're saying. The ordinance wouldn't help in this situation is what everybody, what I hear the legal and everybody else mm -hmm. is saying. What do you know about it? Well, I, I saw where some state, if you look it up, some states, it, it's, it's beginning to start to pick up. Some states have been putting in state laws and things about feeding birds. It has become a bigger issue since COVID came in, a lot of people stayed at home and they started getting bored and they started doing this type of stuff. And it's starting to create a lot of nuisance. One of them was from uh, 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 different places, but they, they had a bunch of pigeons coming in and pooping everywhere. But what I'm saying, it's, there's a lot of rules all coming out. It ain't just the civil matter of it, but it's about, also about the city of, of making sure that the health and safety of another resident, not just the nuisance, but the safety, the health. So what's the health part right. of it about it? Yeah, we'll, so we'll look into it. You know what I'm saying? It. That's what I'm saying. Are, are you keeping us safe? I mean, they were supposed right. to be, right? Yeah, we'll I'm look into it. We'll look into it, Mr. Woods. I appreciate you coming. That's why I had you come. So I want yeah. you to talk yes, to sir. the whole yes, council. Sir. God yeah, bless you. And thank you for your service. Thank you for your service, sir. All right. All right. Anybody else? Public participation. You have three minutes. State your name.
Hello, young man. Hello. Uh, this, this is not an attack on anybody. This is uh, no ill will. State your name, sir. And Sorry, get, I'm yeah. Kenneth Ryan Hall. Uh, live on County Road 11. Okay. Uh, for about, I'm not talking about the last, like for the last five years, but for about 15 years to five years ago, uh, just going through a lot. And I brought this, uh, start off with Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and wickedness in high places. And that God is not happy with us. The powerful and rich oppress the weak and poor. The informed stay silent while the ignorant suffer. Facts are, if you make a very wealthy, connected enemy, it can uh, cause you pain for many, many years. Uh, it's so much as uh, things I've noticed in this world that the Lord gave me, like visions that I've seen in this life, is uh, it showed me everything, and it's there's un it's all unbiblical. And it's unconstitutional. So I don't know anywhere where it could stand. You can't stand with the Bible. You can't stand with the Constitution of the United States. Where do you belong? And uh, anyways, it says, uh, traps are made and carried out. And, affect, and they affect the entire families. And I'm not saying that any or all, well, I'm not saying that all of you or any of you uh, are hurting anybody. And so, but silence supports and emboldens uh, such actions. And uh, choosing to stay silent, not being here to protect God's people, may very well, God may very well say to you, say that he does not recognize you when you see his face. That's just a message from the Lord. He wants us all to turn and repent. And I'm, any of y'all that know who I used to be, <laughs> I'm terribly sorry about that man. Praise the Lord, he's dead. I hope you all have a blessed night. You too, brother. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. All right. Yes, if you, yes, please. Hi. How are y'all? Doing Hello. well. Good. My name is uh, Allison Clark. I live at 9580 Cortez Avenue in Fairhope. Um, I watch a lot of the city council meetings online because I have kids. Uh, the last meeting was a little uh, disturbing, especially some things that were said to you, so I want to apologize for that. Uh, I literally gasped <laughs> when that came out. But during that, uh, after listening to that, I sent an email to the pastors that I've heard speak. Part of what it said was, I've resided in Fairhope for the past 13 years, along with uh, my husband of 23 years and my three children. Um, several years ago, a relative uh, began intensive therapy and confided to his therapist, and eventually me, that he had been sexually abused as a child in Maryland. He pursued criminal cases against three of the def offenders, uh, two in the public school system and a camp counselor at a Southern Baptist church camp, and one was convicted. It became clear throughout the investigation that there were other boys assaulted, and the adults in charge worked together to cover up the abuse, including destroying records. Neglect of this nature added to extreme physical and sexual abuse creates layers of trauma for adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse. Pedophiles look for children with chaotic home lives, and most adults don't come forward until the age of 52. Um, so Maryland had passed a Child Victims Act in early 2023, and my relative was able to file a suit. There are SB 19, which is in the Alabama legislature, um, and I've repeatedly asked, I received no response from the pastor about this. I asked if I could come talk to him, I sent it to other pastors here in Fairhope who spoke at city council meetings, nothing. Talk to representatives, anybody I could talk to. Nobody's interested in helping actual adult victims of child sexual abuse. So when the pastor stood up and 
ridiculed all of y'all and said that you were going to have a group of pedophiles come in next after having the pride meeting here. Mm -hmm. I just want to stand up and say that the Archdiocese of New Orleans has had a subpoena for child sex trafficking. I'll say that again. The New Orleans Archdiocese is being investigated for child sex trafficking. Southern Baptist Convention had over 700 child predators on a list that they knew were abusing people. There have been priests at the Catholic Church here. There have been parishioners at certain churches. There's preachers at other I mean, I could go on. I can name names. I can show you court cases. I can show you all kinds of things. I can't find a single case of at bebobs of a child being molested or at a pride event of a child being molested. Zero. There's none. But I can show you thousands of children that have been hurt in churches and other institutions. Mm. So if these people want to stand up here and ridicule you and ridicule a big part of our community, they need to look inside. They need to look where they stand. Maybe those people in power are trying to get them to blame the theys, all the theys, the gals, the gays, and the theys. That's who gets blamed all the time. So, all right, thank you. Thank you. Can you tell me what Senate Bill that was? Uh, Senate Bill 19 from it's Senator Marika Coleman, or America Coleman? I don't know how to say it. It's America. America. Anybody else? for the good of the order. Okay. Thank you. Anybody? Move to adjourn. Thank you. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries.